Hey guys. Okay, so every single day, without fail, I find myself sending emails to clients that go a little bit like this. Hey, such and such, smiley face. I mean, come on, emails would be so boring if you didn't have a smiley face in them, right? <laughs> anyway, hey, such and such, smiley face. As you'll see from the attached, this property is within a mapped traditional building character overlay, and it was built before 1947. However, just as a heads up, this property is giving me pre-1911 vibes. Now, sometimes I can actually verbalize why it's giving me those vibes. So I might sit there and go, hey, it's got a super steep roof picture. It's got some really cutesy balustrade or it's got some double hungs. Sometimes I can go, that's exactly why it's giving me those vibes. Sometimes, in the words of the castle, I just have to say, it's just the vibe. Can't quite put into words. It's just making me think and making me feel 1911. Don't know why, but it's just the way it is. But anyway, as a heads up, that means that you won't be able to do any of the standard demolition stuff. So you won't be able to utilize the demolition beyond the highest rearmost ridge exemption, which essentially means the external fabric of the original house is protected. Without fail, I always get emails back from people that go, oh, Peter, you don't need to worry. We've checked the pre-1911 overlay. It's not in the overlay. So yeah, we don't need to worry about any of that stuff. I sit there and just go, did you not watch the video that we did last year? Did you not see that image post that we put up like a month or two ago? It doesn't matter if the house isn't in the pre-1911 overlay people. What matters is if the house was built before 1911 and if it is in the traditional building character overlay. Okay, I really, really wanna bring that point home. So today I thought I'd change things up. We'd step away from that magic board and we'd sort of jump in the car, go for a bit of a drive. I wanna take you around, so we pulled up in Kangaroo Point. I'm gonna take you around Kangaroo Point, and which I like to refer to as pre-1911 city because literally every direction you look, there is pre-1911 vibe houses. So I'm gonna show you what jumps out at me as being pre-1911 because what I want is when you actually look up at a property, if you see it's in the map traditional building character overlay, and if you see that that house has similar sort of characteristics to what I'm actually gonna point out to you today, I want that to be an alarm bell for you. So more often than not, these cutesy old houses have low profile, blah, low profile if I get words out, roof forms at the rear. Everyone naturally goes, oh, we'll just rip that roof form up, we'll just put a new roof form on there, you know, get some nice high rich, I'm gonna watch someone drive in behind me, I'm gonna look like a real weirdo sitting in the car talking to myself, the things I do. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, you basically, everyone wants to chop that rear roof form off because then they wanna extend the new roof at a higher profile. So you basically got good floor to ceiling head clearances inside, you know what I'm trying to say here. But unfortunately, if the rear part of the house is protected, then that prevents you from just ripping off the rear of the house. Everyone then is looking at what people hate, which is box gutters or pod extensions, things like that. So that's why this is such a big issue because it can be a total game changer. You can go from doing a standard sort of house extension to, oh bugger, this is, we gotta change things. So that's why it's so important that you get your mind attuned to what pre-1911 houses look like. So it can be that alarm bell for you right from the start. Let's do this. Okay, so what I'm seeing here first and foremost is a steep pyramid roof form. A nice perfect little square. So it would have originally been, let's say four rooms, all side by side, you get what I'm trying to say. Four rooms under that pyramid roof form, really cute sort of compact house. I'm also seeing what would have, it's been modified, but what would have been a bullnose front veranda. So a bullnose front veranda roof, I should probably clarify there. By that, I mean a curved roof form over the front veranda. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this one here, same sort of thing. I'm going to sound like a bit of a broken record because these houses are going to look very same, same as we drive around. But again, we've got that steep pyramid roof form and a bullnose front veranda. Let me just see, is that bullnose? Yes, it is. Very, very slight bullnose, but yet the curved sort of front veranda roof form over that original compact four room house. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so with this one, I'm seeing what I refer to as a super, super, super steep A-frame roof form. So basically, it's got, you would have, this is a really, really old stuff, like I'm talking pre-1900 usually. It would have been a super compact. So before we had compact, it was four bedrooms or four rooms, I should say. When I say super compact, I mean two rooms. So you would have had two rooms side by side, and that's why you just have that really steep A-framed or triangle sort of framed roof running side to side across the property over those original two roofs rooms roofs you, you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> and then you've got that veranda along the front with the detached roof form that's what's jumping oh and i can also see some cross bracing on that front wall that's also jumping out at me as being a pre-1911 sort of feature okay let's go to the next one okay so with this one what i'm noticing is the gable roof form and then the single 
sheet span what am i trying to say here basically the roof form goes from the very top reef peak roof peak get my words out right down to the edge of the veranda so you have a single stretch of roof form it just goes nice and smoothly down it's not broken up at all again that sort of roof form i'm not using technical language here the architect's going to be cringing listening to me <laughs> but you get what i'm trying to say that single smooth sheeting that jumps out at me as being pre-1911 all right let's move to the next one okay so with this one we see a chimney so again you go back what we're talking about the pyramid square steep roof form the bullnose front veranda yeah that's pre-1911 we can acknowledge that now but what's jumping out at me this one is the chimney chimneys are very old cute 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 oh, so beautiful features i remember as a kid we had a fireplace and chimney oh i look back on that house now and i now know it was pre-1911 and i'm like man i didn't appreciate it the double hungs that were actual the windows but they went right from the floor right to the ceiling pretty much oh magnificent house if i could go back there again <laughs> anyway let's move on to this next one Okay, so this next one, again, has that super, super steep A-frame roof form, which would have originally sat over what would have been two rooms side by side. What we're also noticing with this one is what's commonly referred to in slang sort of terms as a bastard roof form. So what you're seeing is that roof sheeting is going down. It's got a slight dog leg, so a slight kick out out over that front veranda. That is a very, very traditional, old school pre-1911 roof feature, that bull no that sorry, not bull nose, bastard roof form. So we're talking a lot about roof forms here. So like I said, if you start to see the steep pyramid roof form, if you start to see that super, super steep A-frame roof form, if you start to see bull nose roof forms, the curved roof forms over verandas, if you start to see the bastard roof forms over verandas, the or the single sheet. I need to find a better way to describe it, but you know what I'm trying to say. That single span of roof form that goes right from the peak right down to the veranda edge. These are all really traditional pre-1911 features. Okay, so this next one that we've got here, this again, we're seeing same thing, a broken record all over again. I'm seeing chimneys, I'm seeing pitched uh, steep roof forms, I'm seeing bullnose or broken front verandas. We've got a few houses in a row there we can actually talk about. Same sort of thing. And yet again, broken record, pyramid roof form, detached front veranda. So, so cute. So pre-1911. And we'll make this one our lucky last. This one has a bit more detail. So when I'm looking at this one, I'm seeing the wrought iron balustrading, the wrought iron detailing, the, uh, what do you call it, window hood? Duh, common vernacular. <laughs> I should know terms like window hood. The window hood over that front double hung window is very detailed. It's very unique. It's not, so it's got sort of a concave feature to it, which is a bit non-standard, so that's jumping out at me. Yeah, it's got a very unique sort of look to it. So the other thing I'll say when it comes to pre-1911 dwellings is you have your cookie cutter design. So I keep sounding like a broken record talking about the super steep roof pitches, the bullnose roof forms, all that sort of stuff. If you're getting houses that are really detailed and really unique and just look like like you'd have haunted ghosts living in them, those ones are also very, very old. So they're from a time period where people weren't sort of copying each other. They were being a bit more unique. They were putting time and effort into coming up with unique designs. So they're really, really old ones. Okay, so hopefully today's little drive-by has given you some insight into what a pre-1911 dwelling can actually look like. Like I said at the beginning, the purpose of today's video is to make you stop next time you get a site which is in the traditional building character overlay and to make you question whether that property could in fact be a pre-1911 dwelling. So I want you to sit there and go, oh, does it have any of those features that we've talked about today? If it does have those features, then you need to be on guard from the start. You need to be wary of the fact that the demolition beyond the highest and rearmost ridge exemption may not apply to that actual structure and therefore that could have significant implications ramifications implications you know what i'm trying to say for your design you may be forced to actually significantly reduce the extent of demolition work even if you seek an application or lodge an application to seek approval to do demolition work council's not going to let you just lob off rear walls and rear roof forms and all that sort of stuff they're going to significantly limit what you can do i'm talking like maybe a wall cut out like a door cut out or a window cut out really really small stuff so i think that covers everything that i want to talk about today until next time thanks for watching for all you red tape lovers out there, I have one thing to say. Well, no, actually, I've got three. Number one, the advice provided in these videos is general in nature. It's not site specific. You would be a silly billy to go and make financial decisions based on this advice without first checking with the town planner. Don't be a silly billy.
Number two, Brisbane Town Planning is in no way linked to Brisbane City Council. The views expressed in these videos are my own, not councils. So if you don't like them, blame me, not council. Number three, what was my number three? Oh yeah, the views expressed in these videos are accurate at the time of recording. If you're watching this video back 10 years from now, the views may not be so accurate. That's all.